Good afternoon. My name is Eric Bugenhagen, reporting in here. And today, as mentioned previously, I want to talk about the Lou Ferrigno chest workout, iconic classic footage that I have not witnessed yet. And I can't wait to watch it with you guys. But first and foremost, I logged on to YouTube and my freaking recommendation page showed me this little doozy. Chest, shoulders, and triceps. Specifically, the video is called the perfect workout for shoulders and chest using science. And my God, I can't pass that up. So looks like we're gonna have to delay the Louis Ferrigno video, maybe one more day. Mama's feeding the, the pooches and the hounds and four dogs grubbing away. But we're gonna, you know, we're gonna push on through. So let's check this out here. This is a science-based, perfect workout for shoulders and chest, fellas. I can't wait to witness it with you. So what we've got here is some electrolytes, a little bit of carbohydrates. All right, first and foremost here, I'm not knocking this. I mean, obviously, I think we're getting a little too analytically geeky, okay? If I may comment on a two to one ratio of sodium, potassium, plus magnesium and calcium, which, you know, listen, I'm all for it. I supplement magnesium because if anything, it lowers blood pressure, it helps you uh, uh, relieve a little anxiety, helps you sleep at night. So, and, and from what people say, like we're all deficient in it apparently. So I supplement magnesium. I'm not opposed to that. Um, the sodium and potassium, listen, I, again, I'm not getting too analytical on this. Um, I've recently just messed around with putting, um, I think like a half teaspoon of, you know, just freaking table salt in my uh, pre-workout concoction and amino acids. So he's got the 10 grams of essential aminos. There ain't nothing wrong with that. Um, anyways, can I say that I see a big difference putting the table salt? Honestly, you know, some people might say, a table salt should be pink Himalayan sea salt. Whatever. I've experimented with all that. And my point is, I don't know if I've ever really seen much of a difference. I think that this is seriously becoming maybe a bit of a fat, okay? If, you know, if I'm gonna be honest with you, it's kind of like the whole creatine deal. Like creatine has been around for so long and everyone's like, oh man, creatine's just super overrated. What you really should be using is sodium. It's always like, it's gotta be one or the other now. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, he's got this little, you know, sodium electrolyte concoction there. But I'm wondering why is he just putting the creatine in then too? You know, just get the best of everything. I don't know. Then the 20 grams of a cyclic dextrin, okay? I feel like this is, if I'm gonna just be honest with you as well, this is just overcomplicating carbohydrates, you know, in my personal opinion. Like, if I want carbs, I'll suck down a banana, you know? I'll suck down some honey. I'll eat some freaking pitted dates. You know, I'll take some fig bars to the gym, right? Um, I feel like this is, you know, cycling dextrin. I wouldn't be surprised. And again, this is no hate or anything. Just, I'm just giving feedback on what I see. Again, I think that this is great. Obviously, I think having a sort of intro workout concoction is definitely the way to go. I'm just giving my two cents. And this whole cyclic dextrin thing, I wouldn't be surprised if it's like a uh, sales ploy to sell cyclic dextrin, if I was gonna be honest because I don't see the point in that. Why not just eat real carbs? A little bit of amino acids all mixed together. Um, just talk about hydration. And I, I mean, the whole breathing strip thing too. Again, it's not knocking anything, but I'm just, it's, everything's starting to look a little gimmicky already from what I see. So it doesn't surprise me that this is a purely science-based workout. When you're training. All right, my shoulders are really stiff and tight today. Uh, so we're gonna take a little bit of extra time warming up. There are a billion different things that you could do to warm up. I'm just going to be doing a little bit of Kali stick swinging. There is nothing magical about these sticks. This is just something that... There's <laughs> a billion different things you can do to warm up. So you're going to do some stick fighting. That's what I would not have guessed. Stick fighting warm up. Which is, uh, I guess, nothing wrong with that. Just seems like, I mean, honestly, here's my two cents again, right? And this is all pretty cool. I mean, let's I watch it. I picked up when I was in the Philippines a few years ago. It looks cool. Because I wanted to learn it. I saw it on TV one day. It was Arrow, the, the TV show. So I thought, that is fucking cool. So I wanted to Language. learn more about it. Language. Went to the Philippines, learned um, from grandmasters over there. 
and now I just do a little bit of it as a warm-up. A lot of people get really pedantic and maybe overthink their warm-ups a lot of the times. They oh, I need to do this first. I feel like that's overthinking the warm-up in all honesty. You know, I don't know about you, Mama, but when I warm up, say I'm doing shoulders, I'll warm up my shoulders. You know what I'm saying? I'll grab the fives. Maybe, hey, even if they have smaller dumbbells, I might even grab, I might even grab the twos and I'll warm up my shoulders and I'll do all this kind of stuff. You know what I mean? I'll do all this kind of stuff to get my shoulders warmed up. That to me is not overthinking the warm up. I think doing stick fighting is really making, diluting what we're really trying to do here. Um, again, it's cool, looks badass. In my opinion, I think it's just a way for him to incorporate that he could do this in his video because it looks pretty cool. It'd be like me saying, all right, well, to warm up, uh, I'm going to grab Mama and we're going to tussle and do some freestyle wrestling. You know what I mean? Because I know how to do it. But it's like, wow, well, I never thought about doing freestyle wrestling. In order to... You get what I'm saying, Mama? You paying attention? Sorry, it wasn't. All right, well, this is... <laughs> Specific rotation drill or activation and things like that. And there are definitely some cases where that kind of approach is very, very, very important, depending on the situation. But for me today, just the same way that I'd go for maybe a light walk or a light jog to get my heart rate up, this is the same kind of thing that we're doing just for the shoulders. We're literally just doing five minutes of that and my heart rate is now at about 110, 115. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. The whole idea of the, war the walking to warm up and stuff like that, aren't you walking just living life? You know what I'm saying? And again, I feel like it's specificity. Like if we're doing shoulders, I'm gonna warm up my shoulders by doing my shoulders. You know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna, that's like a, like, I, I don't know, a really like begin, like a high school PE class. Like, okay, to warm up, we're gonna hop on the treadmill, we're gonna walk on the treadmill for five minutes before we hit the weights. You know what I'm saying, Mama? Yeah. I don't know, is that, does that just seem a little odd? Just like, not odd, that's what everyone I feel like did or used to, I just feel like the best warm up is just warming up the specificity of what you're gonna do. You're feeling like it's generic? Is that what it is? I mean, I just don't see the point. Like a lot of people only have so much time in the gym. So you're gonna spend that little time that you do have, like walking? Well that's true, I feel like a lot of this advice would take like four hours. Yeah, like this is just, I don't know, it's a huge unnecessary step. Considering our workouts take two hours, like yeah, you're doing the Arnold program, you're gonna be two and a half hours deep just doing the actual, and that's not even including the warm up. Which is a great space to be in when you're looking at getting into your know, lifting now. So we're gonna start on the Smith machine. The Smith machine! <laughs> that's a good start. Mama, what is your experience? Alyssa, everyone knows, like, yeah, I've, I've had thousands of videos now. What is your thoughts on the Smith machine, Mala? Uh, I don't like it because I feel like it makes my body move in a way that's not natural. Yeah. I feel like it's like limiting. I don't know if they can hear you. We're gonna have to start maybe up in the production quality, <laughs> but. I said it makes my body move in an unnatural way. I don't feel like my- It forces like, you into like an awkward strength curve. Right? And I feel like it's like just kind of easier. And it doesn't really feel that effective, right? Yeah. Compared to just using a barbell. That's just my opinion too. It's just, it's putting in an awkward strength curve, which is like, okay, that was, that was pretty good. But then when you go to like, all right, let's see it. Like, that, just from my experience, for instance, like I did, um, I tried doing like hack squats on the Smith machine for about a week. I was obsessed, right, mama? Yeah. Cause I don't, I don't, I'll never disregard anything completely. I'll always come back to you, another chance, another chance, you know, guillotine, bench press. Yeah, let's do it on the Smith machine. Let's see how it all feels. And at the end of the day, every time I ever do it, it always like, oh yeah, it does, that feels pretty good. Yeah, that feels pretty good. And then I'll go back and do like a normal squat with a, just a back barbell back squat or something. And it's like, oh yeah, that's, that's way harder. And that <laughs> feels like, just like what I should be doing. Well, I feel like lunging is a good example because you see tons of people lunging like more weight on the Smith machine and then you see them lunging with a regular barbell and they're super weak. Yeah, because they have no stabi stability with a regular yeah. barbell. This is an un they're so used to an unnatural movement pattern, which that's, I guess, the perfect shoulder and chest workout right away. Unnatural movement pattern. I put a little piece of tape down on the ground to know how far back. That's good advice. Now, the way that I'm critiquing literally every single sentence here, it's gonna take a couple hours, but 
Now the piece of tape, now this is something I've thought about numerous times anyways. For a gym setup, it's good advice. We're gonna put your bench, that way uh, you're Mr. Freaking Consistency because at the end of the day, you're gonna get stronger from specificity and the more you do something, the better you're gonna get at it. So if your setup's always the same, you're probably gonna progress faster. So the tape, I feel like is ideal for say you're doing like um, squats or deadlifts or something. You can put tape where your feet are. That way you're always squatting and deadlifting the exact same stance. That way you're just gonna freaking progress a little bit quicker because your body is like absolute comfortable with this exact same setup. The setup, the ritual, all that is key to peaking the strength. So if one day you're squatting with a narrow stance, the next day you're squatting with a wide stance or you know what I'm saying? Like that's, it's never gonna feel the same if you do that. But if you mark where your stance is, which is easy to do at a home gym, at a commercial gym it's not easy, you can't really do that. But if you mark your stance, like you're just gonna progress faster in my opinion. To put the bench, but I put it off center. So when I line the bench up with the tape, I hold things off. So I gotta do this to make sure that I got it right. All right, Smith Machine Incline Press. I like Smith taking incline. a pretty much shoulder width grip. So a lot of people would normally go out to say maybe here-ish, where you've got shoulder width and then you go maybe a hand width or two hand widths out. I personally find that I get much better uh, range of motion and sensation. One and a half reps, just overcomplicating it already. That's just my opinion. Obviously yeah, the intensity techniques and whatever, it's fine, you can do it. But of course it's like, as complicated as can be already for the perfect shoulder and chest workout. Smith machine incline bench with one and a half reps. Through my chest and power, if I go literally like that's almost right over my shoulder. Yep, and we're going to, we're going to an ad. And ultimately, it looks like he's got an extremely narrow grip when I'm looking at the knurling on the bar, because that's where like your grip would be, and that's. Not, and this is not like a, a criticism or anything. It just tells me that this guy has an extremely small frame, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But I, I do generally find that it seems like all YouTubers for the most part are extremely small people. Is, you think there's a reasoning for behind that, Bella? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. But I'm just looking at the, the I mean, if I gripped it there, it'd be like this. You know what I mean? Which, yeah. nothing wrong, again, it's just, it's just an observation that I'm seeing. <laughs> uh, uh, what was this, a science article? He would do it just in whatever for all this research on lengthened training being good. Ah, uh, yeah, the lengthened partials. That's how we're putting the one and a half reps in. Um, okay, well, whatever. I mean, that's it's funny that that's such a hot thing now. So lengthened partials, mama. Yeah. So it's basically like this is the, the most effective for hypertrophy, right? And this phase here is not as effective for hypertrophy as the bottom part. So, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm explaining it to Mama. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, but again, one and a half reps. I don't know. I just, I think at the end of the day, it comes down to uh, why don't we just rep it, you know what I mean? Full down and then just not worry about locking out like just this last part, right? Anyone ever that I see that, you know, is horse cocking. A lot of reps or big bench and stuff like that. It's for the most part we're just always pressing like this, right? Because from here to here it's easy, right? When I'm when I'm cranking these out and I know if, if I can push one more, I, I'll never have a problem locking it out here. And I just feel like from here to here it's so minimal, extra. Like it's just this range of motion is almost useless. I feel like so it just this is what's effective anyways. So I feel like going here to lock up, here, to lock up. Why not just, why not just pump it? That's just my experience. This is Tater Tot. Let's see, he's got one hell of a jaw. Tater, Tater! Let's see. I'm asking you to play with the mechanism. Come on, hold. One second. 
killing my video. Bro. Oh, come on, Taylor, get that jaw warmed up. Come on. Come on, Taylor, you're embarrassing me. He's usually so strong. There it is. Oh, careful, Dad. He's fine. You just gotta get a couple warm up reps. Official man is a thing. All right, let's keep moving on here. This is taking forever. It's a huge waste of time. Working by doing that. So we need to have our own lens to be able to say, okay, yes, this is what the research says. This is what a lot of Evan. Oh. I can win and go on a big adventure or something. There's only 10 kilos in here. I mean, you're not here. There's actually there's, there's 50 kilos in here. Um, 10 kilos in here. And that was. So, like, this is a. I feel like this is a cool exercise, like a weighted push up. He said there's only 10 kilos, so 22 pounds in there. So weighted push up on gymnastics rings, which it's cool, you know, the, there's a lack of stability on the rings. So um, that like chaos effect in a sense, like definitely adds like increased like activation of the pectoralis, I believe I've, I've seen that before as well. So, I like the the straps and all that, but I don't this this the perfect work. I don't think this is the perfect workout at all because how do you like what happens when the the what you got to keep buying more and more weighted vests or you have to have someone put like plates in? And I've had Mama put plates in my back before, and I try to do push ups, and they once you get a, a couple plates, those suckers slide off and they can smash your fingers or something. It's just it's a pain in the ass. So if I had to give a suggestion to this and with the little chaos effect that you're gonna throw in here. Just do a barbell bench and put the resistance and put some resistance bands through a plate and hang the plate, hang the plates. So you'll have your bench, right? And then on the ends of the barbells, you'll put bands that are having weights like swinging or hanging. So that when you press it, you have that extra kind of chaos effect. I wish I had some way to explain. I've done it on video before. Do you guys get what I'm saying here? Um, do you understand what I'm saying, Mama? Sorry, I wasn't listening. All right, so do you know what I'm talking about? Where if I'm doing a flat bench and I'm putting bands on the ends of the barbell with weights hanging from the bands? Yeah. So that when I press it, the, the weights hanging from the bands bounce like yeah. as I'm pressing? It makes it less stable. Yeah, exactly. Because I think that that's, for here, he's saying that the best thing for the science-based, whatever, is a freaking gymnastics ring weighted push-up. Which, again, I said it was a cool exercise, but it's very hard to progress with that, in my opinion. Yeah. Then you gotta get, get more and more weighted vests and stuff. So, I just think doing a barbell bench with the resistance bands for the chaos effect, or like the bamboo bar, the tsunami bar, or one of those bars that um, take away some stability. Do the same thing, but much easier, much easier setup. And much harder. Oh. Do the buffalo dance. Rip and your wrist and your forearms and stuff out of the equation. Oh my god. A lot more. I find a lot of people, they really squeeze onto the handles a lot. And as a result, this stuff starts getting really fatigued and really just tight. And can be quite like. God, I feel like I'm seeing such a hater, but this stuff's all so ridiculous. A lateral raise with a freaking ankle cuff on so that you don't grip the dumbbell. Tater, my goodness. <laughs> goodness gracious, Tater. Just throw it. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, you have to hold it to the bottom. Oh, he's, he's good. <clears throat> this is a better workout than the the wrist cuff lateral raise. Okay. Tater, I'll play with you. Again, what are we what did I talk about yesterday with the straps on the body weight pull-ups and stuff? Like what is that with us trying to do everything we can to eliminate our hands from gripping stuff. Like this is the first link of the chain that has to do the work. Like I don't think you're gonna get bulbous, stacked, and jack if you're doing everything you can to avoid your, avoid your hands and forearms working at all times. Like I've tried this all in the past, and in my opinion, it feels like shit. Okay. So oh yeah, what if I take my hands out? I can really. It's like there's something to be said about grip strength and increased shoulder stability, and I believe that's the whole idea behind like the fat grips feel good when you put them on for pressing because you have to grip harder and therefore it, le it leads to like increased shoulder stability. So it's the same thing. If you can grip like a fat bulbous shaft when you're doing these lateral raises, like your shoulders are going to feel more locked in. And I can speak that from experience. 
you know, grab some dumbbells, do some laterals, and then put some fat grips on those same dumbbells and do the laterals. Then it's like almost a unique sensation. It feels better. It feels more locked in. Like you can handle more weight because you're gripping that sucker harder. Whereas here it's like, I just don't get it. Why take your hands out of things? It's just like so, it's just so complicated for no reason. When we go to the gym, what, do you, what would you rather do? You'd rather just grab some dumbbells and some laterals or you want to go to the cable station and have to put the cuffs on and then... Well, again, it depends how much time you have, right? Which most people don't have as much time as a YouTuber if that's like their primary job. Yeah. Anyways, it's just, I don't know. I'll always prefer... It's even like the, um, the Ukrainian deadlifts. The Ukrainian... Or it's like you can, you're basically squatting, but you're holding the weight like a deadlift. It's like, I wouldn't want to work as many muscle groups as I can. Cause I feel like the body works as one solid, strong, thick, grizzled unit. You know what I'm saying? So if you're taking, you're making this a very unnatural movement, for instance, by taking your hands your grip out of it, I just feel like that's so unnecessary. I feel like, uh, the more you can, the more muscles you can incorporate into your workout, the better. I don't know. That was always the whole, um, that the way that I kind of learned as I progressed throughout the years of like the dinosaur training with Brooks cubic and all that. It's like, you want to work as many muscle groups as possible, just lifting up freaking logs and stuff. And of course people are saying, Oh, it's, but it's bodybuilding. It's not strength, but it's like, even if this did build muscle, you're going to be weak as a kitten. You know what I mean? You can't even grab a 10 pound dumbbell. Whereas here, I'm not relaxing my hands, but I'm not just completely squeezing the shit out of it completely to a point where there's a lot of force going through it as well, which makes it quite uncomfortable. So why are you pulling it from behind? I feel like a lot of people pull it from the front. Yeah, front's fine as well, but when you pull from in front of you here, imagine if, if I was like, imagine if I was like this, I was pulling me this way, I'm not getting as deep a stretch in my shoulder as opposed to it pulling behind me here. That's a much deeper stretch. I mean, I'm exaggerating the positions a little bit more to show you, but so much deeper. But if you're in the front, what you can get if you stepped behind. It's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Stretch position here. Oh my God, now we're kneeling. <sighs> now we're... <laughs> oh, got a few more. You can see it's like. Um, Similar to how you might bring a dumbbell from out here. All right, what do we got here? But you see I'm doing it under quite a bit of control, like I'm intentionally like slowing it. So helping it stretch up, come down, and then push down helps to maybe integrate that area into the movement a little bit more. I just find it very comfortable. It's something I naturally do. And for me to lock things down, to keep myself fixed the entire time, I ask myself, what's the net benefit to me doing that, keeping things locked in? I'm probably going to get the exact same amount of stimulus in my triceps doing it like this versus doing this controlled pull down. So same kind of benefit, but what's the cost? I me mean, having to mentally devote attention towards saying, don't let your elbows drift forward whatsoever. That secures going against my natural instincts my laps or other my own. I don't know what he's talking about here, but I, I do agree that I think being locked in and doing it, I actually like getting that, a bit of a, more of a stretch too. And then it, it makes it easier to force out more reps as well, which I think these guys are all against forcing reps out. They want to keep everything as strict as possible, but I like to let my elbows go up so I can pull and then, you know what I mean? Use that little bit, of, like use my lats, right? and then control it as much as possible and kind of let it come up. I just feel like that feels better to me. Like I get a bigger stretch with a little bit of that, that uh, shoulder movement. Uh, I think that's the workout though, which, um, I don't know, it kind of seems like, kind of sucked in all honesty. For the best chest, shoulders, and triceps workout, a push down, a cable, kneeling, ankle banded lateral raise, uh, Ring push up and an incline Smith machine bench press. I mean, I would honestly like call me old fashioned, but I would personally say bench press. Let's say you know, you can even do 
whether dumbbells or barbells, they're even Stevens, both gravy, right? Bench, shoulder press, or laterals with freaking dumbbells, or you can do both. Why don't we just do both? And then triceps, like skull crushers, uh, or dips, weighted dips. That's my opinion. That would be the best. And no overcomplicated one and a half reps or anything like that. Just horse cocking as much weight as possible. Get up to a top set in terms of, you know, low reps. Work up to the top set of four or something like that. And then drop the weight down to 20% or something. And then crank it off for like 10. That would be my 10, 12 or something along those lines. That would technically, not technically, personally, that would be my, uh, what's this video? Sorry, that's Perfect workout for shoulders and chest.